Welcome all to Super Bowl 58 NFL Pub Hub. The giant game is just a few days away. And although he has not made an appearance on NFL Pub Hub, which we do want to make changes for next year, I wanted to start this show with my co host from Bankroll Blitz. And what a season! My co-host had 221 wins, 205 losses, 51.9%, with an average line of plus 131. So he had an ROI of plus 9.15%, plus 38.97 units on the season. Truly spectacular work. And I know, Troy, that you are angry about how the playoffs have followed through. But regardless, spectacular work this season. How are you, my friend? I'd be doing a lot better if I had a better playoff run. I'm not gonna lie, I was I kind of had to step away because it's bittersweet, man, to end the season. And the regular had just having such a great regular season and just crashing at the end. I've lost every single divisional, wild card, conference championship each round. I kind of took an L. Um, you know, after the season, I was I felt like I was operating with a massive edge, and just things haven't shook out here, man. So it's unfortunate to go out like that, but hopefully we can turn things around today. We got one more game left. Let's get to it, man. One more shot, and I was unable to follow my very successful season last year. Uh, uh, angry, uh, you just got to take it and figure out how to be better next year, and that's all I can do. A disappointing season for me, but you kept us afloat with your excellent season. Great to see all the cappers in the chat ready for our big Super Bowl 58 breakdown. We have 18 cappers, 19 including myself who will be on the show delivering on today's program. Shout out to all the guys in the chat. We got Sammy Calmer, Nasty Nate. Sammy Calmer says Chiefs plus three. Chiefs money line will add a few props and same game parlays. Uh, if you read around the predictions, it's all Chiefs, 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 Chiefs. In fact, I couldn't find one 49ers uh, breakdown. 49ers on the spread of the money line. Not one. I couldn't find one. Not yeah, I usually I usually do that type of d uh, deep dive just to see what the industry is on, and uh, I was the same way. Although usually I go extensive and I cover everybody, just because I had to step away and just get my thoughts together about this game, you know. But yeah, it's it's crazy to see that again because it was the same last week, and guess what? Casey got the money. Well, yeah. Uh, well, I guess well, it wasn't the same necessarily. Definitely not. No, the same. There was a lot of people on the Ravens and us as a group on NFL Pop Hub in the conference finals had the worst performance that we've ever had. Uh, in fact, of the 15 cappers that we had for the conference finals breakdown, only two were in the black. Was it Dutch and Birdie? Uh, no, it was Birdie and MMA Locker Room Mills. They were our uh, two in the black. And Birdie is now our overall leader. He'll be on here shortly. Shout out to everybody joining us. J-Dub in the house, too. We got Real Deal Prime, Gerald Jones, Michael Johnson, Al Cervic. Wine Time Sports will be on the program, as will Sean Higgs and Flash, who are both here in the chat. Harold William Slatsy 45 says, uh, three times to charm, my guys. Sitting on the 49th future, so have the same two bets on the Chiefs. Uh, Cocaine Cowboy has a kilo on Kelsey TD. Uh, Harold Williams. <laughs> Harold Williams, I know. Uh, and I'll serve it. Great to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining us. Let's get right to work. Let me quickly tell you who is on this show. Troy and I are getting it started. Then Bo Bano, Birdie, Sean Higgs, Peter Loshak, The Big Ragu, Flash, Dutch, Guns, Brizzy, Tim Earl, LJ, Ramon Scott, Wine Time, MMA Locker Room, our guy Milzy, then Marley, Nicholas Earl, and Dave Rogers shuts us down. So my situation is this. In the Pub Sports NFL Confidence Pool, uh, if I pick the winner of this football game, nobody can beat me. And three cappers can tie me. Uh, those three cappers are Jose Bouquet, uh, Preston Ekdal, and Rusia. Rusia can also uh, tie me. Uh, there's a thousand dollars up for the winner, and the, there's prizes for the top three. So even if you tie it uh, atop the leaderboard, there's still cash to go around. And on December 12th, a day that I spoke with you extensively about this bet, this was a time when the Eagles were a dominant force. 
in the NFC, and the Cowboys looked very, very good. And the Chiefs were nowhere to be found. The Ravens hadn't gone on that roll yet, and Burrow was had injured himself. And I put $500 on the NFC at minus 120. And I haven't added anything to the 49ers. Uh, but I have that NFC rolling since December 12th. I have bet the under 47 and a half. And my same game parlay is already in. It is the 49ers money line. The 49ers race to 10. The under 50 and a half. Over two and a half field goals. And both teams to score 10 points with just a hundred dollar wreck SGP, which opens up an opportunity to bet another one. Or if I don't, maybe if I get more confidence on it, I just bet it again. It's just a hundred dollar wreck bet at this point. That spot. Hey, this is a great spot to live bet, too. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna touch on that during the cap. So yes, and we will figure out whoever is not at a Super Bowl party will be at our online Super Bowl party right here for our NFL live stream that I will be uh, one of the hosts for. Let me talk about the most important factors here and set a quick table, and then Troy will give us his plan of action. First off, this opened up at minus two and a half. Some people found minus threes for a few seconds. Uh, we're using pinnacle openers. A pinnacle opened this up minus two and a half. It wasn't a real minus two and a half. Uh, you know, uh, the at that point, the minus two and a half for the 49ers at opening was plus 105. So four minutes later is minus two at minus 105. Then, of course, as everyone knows, it was Chiefs money nonstop. Chiefs, 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 Chiefs. This line went down to one. And then it started climbing again. It started climbing again about five days ago. <clears throat> got to one and a half. It got to two. The two is juiced right now at minus 108. If you want the Chiefs plus two, it's minus 102. From a money line perspective, we'll go over to that. Uh, that's where a lot of the cash uh, has been put on by Chiefs backers. And this is uh, crucial. Right now, the 49ers are at minus 131. They opened at minus 125. The line has moved six cents towards the San Francisco 49ers, which is hard to believe with all of the money that is on the Chiefs. There was a point when the books were very concerned about the 49ers winning the Super Bowl because of future bets. That is no longer the case. The books now need and want the 49ers to prevail. From a total standpoint, this is at 40, it opened at 47 and a half at Pinnacle, and it lasted there for two days, 48 hours before it dropped to 47. But 47 and a halfs are everywhere. And Heritage has a 48. So that is the line and total situation. From a cash flow perspective, on the spread, 71% of the tickets and 69% of the cash is on the Chiefs. On the money line, 64% of the tickets and 68% of the cash is on the Chiefs. And on the total, 44% of the tickets and 65% of the cash is on the under. And there is a belief that there was no need to move on the under yet. There's a belief that the public's going to come in in the 48 or 72 hours before the Super Bowl and hammer this total to the over. So the initial market move in the Super Bowl spread, which initially moved to the Chiefs, has been the right side in 11 of the past 16 games championship games we all know what Mahomes has done as a dog 10 one and one against the spread in his career and the Chiefs have been glorious to the under all year long I cashed on them last or two weeks ago in the AFC finals 14 of their 20 games this year have gone to the under then with the 49ers we know they have very high efficiency offensively but they run the slowest tempo in the NFL so can the 49ers avenge their 31-20 loss to the Chiefs in Super Bowl 54 four years ago? Let's get to work and set the table up. The 49ers come in off a 34-31 victory at home over the Lions in the NFC Championship in Santa Clara. They came back from a 24-7 halftime deficit. Brock Purdy was 20 for 31 for 267 yards, touchdown interception. He also ran five times for 48 yards. CMC was excellent. 
McCaffrey ran 20 times for 90 yards and two touchdowns, caught four passes for 42 yards. Debo Samuel played very well despite coming in questionable with shoulder injury, made eight catches for 89 yards. Brandon Ayuk made three for 68 in the touchdown. But George Kittle was hard to find offensively, finishing with just two catches for 27 yards. The Niners finished six of 12 on third down. They're third in the league on third down, converting 48.8% of third down chances in the regular season and playoffs. They were four or five in the red zone. They've been the number one red zone team in the league, including the playoffs, 68.5% of red zone drives are cashed. The 49ers defense has not looked good. It's been a problem. They've allowed 52 points and 770 yards in two games. Against the Lions, it was another situation where Nick Bosa was the only danger in the pass rush. He finished with two sacks, four quarterback hits. The rest of the team finished with no sacks and one quarterback hit. The Lions went 6-12 of 12 on third down. The 49ers have struggled defensively on third down all year long, allowing opponents to convert 42.1% of opportunities. That's 27th in the NFL. The Lions went 3-4 for four in the red zone. The 49ers' red zone defense is mediocre this year, 14th in the league, allowing touchdowns on 54.7% of red zone drives. Now, thankfully, the Chiefs' red zone offense has been weak, much weaker than the Lions' red zone offense. The Niners allowed 4.9 yards per carry on the ground against the Packers in the divisional round. They were outgained 442 to 413 in the NFC Championship game against the Lions. And to win here, we all know what has to happen. Kelsey has to be stopped. He's averaging 87.3 yards per game in the postseason. He scored three touchdowns. Since 2018, the Chiefs are 32-5 and five in any game where Kelsey has at least eight receptions. So can Fred Warner... Probably with the help of Logan Ryan. That's what we expect from an X's no standpoint. Slow down Kelsey. The Lions, or so excuse me, the 49ers have lined up in zone on 67.6% of their defensive snaps this year. Cover three is a mainstay for the Niners. They have uh, 35% of their defensive snaps in the regular season and postseason have been in cover three. And Mahomes has not been very good against cover three. This year, he's completed 111 of 166 passes for 1,243 yards, five touchdowns, five interceptions, and a passer rating of 86.5. Now, do I think that Mahomes is going to struggle in the Super Bowl because the 49ers are strong or adept at cover three? No, but it's helpful. It's helpful to slow down the best quarterback in the league. The Chiefs are headed back to the Super Bowl for the fourth time in five years. Defending Super Bowl champs looking to be the first team to go back to back since the Patriots did it 19 years ago. They're coming off a very impressive 17-10 victory at Baltimore in the AFC Championship. Patrick Mahomes with 30 of 39 for 241 yards, one touchdown. Kelsey caught 11 passes for 116 yards and a touchdown. But that was it. You know, Rasheed Rice caught eight passes for 46 yards. I mean, there was a MVS sighting. Pacheco is very good. He ran 24 times for 68 yards and touchdown. He caught four for 14. He's going to be a problem. The 49ers run defense has not been very good. The Chiefs finished eight of 18 on third down. They're sixth in the NFL on third down, converting 43% of their opportunities. They were two of three in the red zone. As I said, mediocre this year, 19th in the league, scoring touchdowns on 52.7% of their red zone drives. That number is just 46.2 in the playoffs. But Spagnolo's defense looks excellent. You know, all year, top 10 in DVOA and EPA, allowed per play they've allowed just 41 points through the first three playoff games that dolphins bills and ravens their pass rush was very strong against the ravens four sacks seven quarterback hits but one of those sacks was by charles omenahu who suffered a torn acl and he will be unavailable here it's a big loss he finished third in the team in the regular season with seven sacks the ravens were just three of 11 on third down the chiefs ranked fifth this year on third down allowing conversions, just 36% of opportunities. And that number has dropped to 29.7% in the playoffs. Ravens were 0 for 1 in the red zone. The Chiefs red zone defense have been strong all year. They're 8th in the league, allowing touchdowns on 50.9% of red zone drives against. That number is worse in the playoffs. They're allowing touchdowns on 60% of red zone drives. We're still waiting on star guard Joe Thune with the pec injury. And he is listed as questionable. So you have... Mahomes 10 1 and 1 against the spread as an underdog. You have Andy Reid 31 and 7 off a of bye. So, of course, the whole world is on the Chiefs. The Chiefs had everything to prove to start the playoffs. Now they've delivered, and the whole world is on them. And Mahomes and Kelsey are the most famous men on the planet. And all of a sudden, the 49ers now have everything to prove. 49ers have covered two of their last seven games. They've not played their best football. 
can you turn it on and play your best football here in the Super Bowl? We shall see. Here we go, Troy. Let's roll. What is your plan? Super Bowl 58. How are you getting paid? Yeah, so it was really interesting because last year I had an incredible playoff run and took a massive bell in the Super Bowl. Hopefully this year it's vice versa. And I should probably start by prefacing my uh, my hatred. I don't want to say hatred, but my, you know, my willingness to fade Patrick Mahomes and KC because I've done it three weeks in a row unsuccessfully. And every week I got a little bit heavier and heavier. And I took a bath last week, uh, fade in KC. So that's just something anyone watching this currently probably already knows that. After the fact, you should know that before uh, I get on with this, uh, with my, my overview on this game. But I think touch and base on this cash flow again, spread bets, 71% of spread bets, 64% of money line bets are on KC. Like Jimmy alluded to, Pinnacle moved this line from two and a half down to two. But the money line odds, like you said, went from minus 125 to minus 131. This is a market that you see in basketball games. You don't see this in the NFL, especially with spreads three or less. It's a very uh, unique market. I feel like it's completely different playoffs from the regular season. And maybe that's that's been part of the reason why I've taken a bath. But at the same time, I think it's very notable that uh, this spread's moving. You know, the line's moving opposite ways, depending on how you look at it, because this is very much so a money line price. And, you know, there's a lot of KC backers on that money line. Uh, but what this cap really came down to me, I had to take, like I said, I took a I took a couple days away, got back at it, started capping this game. And really, what's the appropriate number in this game? The regular season, if I just had this, looked at the numbers from the regular season and applied my my line, my model towards this game, it'd be at a 6.25, more towards a six and a half almost. Now, I I, I bet you a lot of cappers probably had five, five and a half, but I try to avoid that number because to me, that's a reactionary number and my number doesn't move. But let's, let's try to answer that question. What should this number be? Because prior to the playoffs, this number should be at like a six, six and a half, in my opinion. In this postseason, what have we seen? We've seen San Francisco. They've had one of the worst defensive EPAs in the NFL. If you take what they've done in the playoffs, isolated it, and plugged it into what the regular season and ranked it amongst all the teams, they'd be 32nd in EPA per play. They probably should have lost both games. And I talked about them probably should have lost. They probably should have lost to the Packers. And if the Lions didn't shoot themselves in the foots, you know, possession after possession, they probably should have lost that game. But what do great teams do? I mean, both these two teams are great teams. Don't get it twisted. I don't want to – whichever team wins, I mean, they're both great teams. And one team is really heavily weighted towards quarterback. Um, but the, the 49ers are a really complete team, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, we can't completely discredit what happened with this defense, especially in the playoffs. But that was against two of the best offensive lines in the NFL. I do want to call that out because the strength of this 49ers team is their defensive line. And when they were going up against one of two of the best pass blocking units and the Lions are by far and away the best uh, offensive line unit in the NFL. And KC offensively, so you have San Francisco on one side, uh, they are they have a real outlier performance as it relates to their defense. And on the KC side, you're having an outlier performance as it relates to their offense because their numbers in the postseason, or really since the Bengals game, uh, have been completely different from what we've seen from this KC team throughout the regular season. And I've touched on this many times, right? Everyone knows this. Uh, now this this offense in the playoffs, it was against two decimated defenses in the Bills and the Dolphins. And versus the Ravens, uh, was it really impressive? I mean, we could talk about it. I know some people will say it's it's pretty impressive. Uh, you, the yards per attempt, 4.4. That was less than Baltimore. Yards per carry, 2.2. They had five first downs from penalties. Ravens had zero. I mean, the question really is, do you value a three-game sample size, or if you want to extend it back to four with the Bengals and this KC offense, or do you value a full season of data where this spread should be six? In my opinion, and you probably not to anyone's surprise, I value a bigger sample size. Uh, when I look at this KC offense, I don't think I could change my thesis. I mean, they, their performances, the Bengals, the Dolphins, and the Bills, that doesn't get me there. And against this Ravens team, they struggled mightily after the, strip, the script was exhausted. Against the Ravens, first after the first two drives, which resulted in touchdowns, they had four first downs, two of which were from penalties. If you look back in the regular season, it's pretty much a very similar story throughout the regular season. This team was 29th 
in second or in second half points per game. San Francisco, on the other hand, was first. When I look at the San Francisco defense and I try to what is real on how they performed um, this postseason, that's the question I was trying to answer. I had to go back and watch the tape, and it, it's it's a really it's really you're splitting hairs. They did because I want to put so much credit. Maybe it is. Maybe it is my biasness to want to fade KC again. But they did struggle versus two of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And that was clearly a major factor in these games. And I, I mean, if you look at what they did, you know, week over week, and you look at that first, like I talked about this um, a couple of weeks ago after the Packers game, where they looked like they got diced up on the ground. But if you remove that one carry by Aaron Jones, where he took it, you know, 60 yards or whatever, it was a completely different story. And we know that these two offensive lines are nothing like this KC offensive line, which I've been hammering every single week is below average. And now they might be without Tooney, who's their best pass blocking offensive lineman. He's their best lineman all around. And without him, it's going to be a severe downgrade. And against this uh, San Francisco defense up front, I think it could be, uh, you know, cause some trouble for them. And this KC defense, they have been great. I folded my hand in saying that this KC defense was overrated months ago, not even weeks ago, months ago at this point. But, I mean, Baltimore kind of let this freaking team off the hook. Let's be honest. They only had five designed runs to running backs. They didn't incorporate running backs into the passing game until the second half, in which case they moved the ball down the field. Now they didn't, weren't able to score. They threw a pick in the end zone on first down, and they fumbled on the inch, you know, one-yard line or whatever. So they got bailed out a little bit. But the point there is I don't think this San Francisco 49er team, I think they know their identity, and I think Shanahan is not going to abandon ship at the first red flag. If something goes wrong, the Bills abandoned ship. When they got stopped for two lost two carries in the backfield, they completely abandoned the running game, which was working every play before that. And the Ravens, they didn't even try to run the ball. I can't even explain what they try to do. I trust Shanahan's get, you know, I trust that Shanahan has an appetizing game plan. I just couldn't get to this price without giving some type of points for the Taylor Swift narrative which extracted all its value at this point. There's no more football to be had. This KC offense is not as good as we've seen, in my opinion. So going back to the first two questions that I ask, do you want to put all your eggs in the basket of San Francisco's defensive EPA in the playoffs or and or the KC offense and how they performed over the past three to four weeks? In my opinion, KC offense is not as good as we've seen, and the San Francisco defense is better than we've seen. Now, I'm still downgrading this defensive unit. But still, that only gets me to a three and a half, a three and a half. I can't get this number below three based on how I have graded. I think Shanahan's going to have a proper game plan. You know, this kind of reminds me of like LeBron in Cleveland. You know, he can get to the finals every year, but can he win it with nobody, uh, you know, backing him up? I mean, I don't want to say nobody, right? It's football. It's a team game. You get there as a team. But Mahomes has really put this team on his back. Ultimately, man, I'm on the Niners. Yeah, I, just like you, I'm on the NFC to win the championship. Uh, I bet that, you know, months ago at this point. I got the money line at minus 125. I got minus two at minus 105. I a light, just like you, Jimmy, I'm on the under 247 and a half. And I haven't posted that yet, but that'll definitely be hitting my Twitter tonight. I bet the under 247 and a half. And just thinking about the pace of play. And like I said, I'm over basically, my, you know, I gave you the reasons why. Casey's offense is overrated. Casey's defense is underrated in this particular matchup. And both teams are very slow paced, methodical teams. Now I know that Casey's offense has been getting to the line faster. They're snapping the ball slightly higher in the shot in the shot clock. See, I've already moved on to NBA in, you know, in the play clock, they've snapping the ball a little bit faster, but it's still one of the slowest paces in the NFL. And, uh, you know, I'll be looking to live bet both San Francisco and the under, because we know what Casey does. They like to come out. They have a script that they stick to. Patrick Mahomes is very, very good at executing the game plan. Maybe they get up early. Maybe there's 14 points in the first quarter. It'd be a perfect opportunity to live bet the under. And my, I'm only looking to live bet San Francisco. Probably not to anyone's surprise. Marvelous Mike's in the chat already saying, another L, Troy. He was warning me before I even started talking. Uh, and I know everybody will. And I know everybody likes the Chiefs in this case. And, I, and I'll give you some database trends because the database has printed money in every sport since I've implemented the database back to MLB, 
the NFL and now in the NBA, it's producing. So I think it's important now. Is it important in this market, which is completely different from the regular season? I don't know. Take it for what it is. But when it comes to the side, when a spread opens at minus two and a half and the money line market moves towards the home team, the home team, or I don't want to say the home team because I flipped it to both sides. So I get the home and the away. This is a, a, a multi-dose sample when you get the home team and the away team. When the spread opens at two and a half and the money line market moves one way, the money line market is 20 and 11 straight up. Totals that open at 47 or 47 and a half and move to the under, 17 and five to the under. And if a spread is a field goal or less, the under is eight and two. And um, yeah, it's been a great season. It's I got to come out on top here. I really believe that the San Francisco 49ers pulled it out. Well, I can't wait for Sunday. And your breakdown has given me more confidence because I did not read a single breakdown that was similar to what you just dropped. Everybody is on the Chiefs. And, you know, Sky Dragon said, imagine what the, uh, you know, Chiefs offense would look like without their league leading drops. Uh, I read one account for that saying they would have had the eighth best offense in the league if it wasn't for the ridiculous amount of drops that they did have more than the average, if they just had the average, the league average amount of drops. But Troy is on the 49ers minus two and minus 105. He's on the 49ers money line. He's on the under 47 and a half uh, with me as well. And then he's got the NFC bet with me as well. That is a Troy Torrance. The last bets made here on the football season this year. And you were incredible. Uh, great, great work this year. You carried the show. Uh, thank you for that because somebody has to be winning on a show. Uh, you can't have both cappers losing because it's unwatchable. So thank you for everything that you did, Troy, my friend. And please, everybody watching, support our guy, Troy, on X, at Troy Torrance 11. He drops all of his action there. Uh, Troy, excellent work this year, my friend. Can't wait to do it again next year. And thank you for all that you did, man. Do you have any last words for the Capers supporting the show? Yes, sir. It's been a great season. Every year that passes, we get a little bit stronger. And it's been a blessing sitting up here with you, Jimmy, giving me the opportunity and the platform to show off how much work I put in because, to make no mistake, I put in an incredible effort every single week to come here fully prepared and to give you guys what I presume to believe, especially before this Kansas City debacle, was an unbiased analysis and that's what i try to do every single week i put in the hours i hope you guys appreciate that this is the best damn community in the world man pub sports radio 